Good evening, everybody. Joe from NDB Aviation, and tonight we're going to talk about your overall setup for your sim at home and its core components. So if you're going to build yourself a flight sim setup from scratch and you need a yoke, a joystick, maybe throttle quadrant or quadrants and rudder pedals, that's what this video is going to talk about. It's going to hone in on the basic core components of your flight sim setup. We're not going to talk about PC parts, laptops, any of that other stuff, or monitors. We're going to focus on the core components. In this video, I'm going to give you my wish list. I'm going to put that at the end. Timestamps are everywhere for this one. But uh, at the end of the video, I'll say if I was going to build something from scratch, what exactly I would want. And that will include things that are still coming to market, so things that are not on store shelves yet. And before that, though, we're going to talk about your best GA setup best budget setup and that will tie in a few things there and give you a couple of options after that we'll talk about a fighter setup the fighter setup will kind of also feed into if you want to do space simulation but for the most part it's going to be for fighters after that we're going to talk about boeing and airbus and uh, i'm running out of fingers here and then we're going to talk about rudder pedals now one caveat to this video that i want everybody to understand i'm only going to be talking about products aside from my wish list that you can buy usually off of store shelves that maybe Best Buy, Micro Center, or one of the many, many other uh, retailers are across this planet that resell Honeycomb, Logitech, Thrustmaster, CH products, and, and uh, Turtle Beach as well. Now, I haven't tried any of the Turtle Beach products out. However, there are a couple things I'd say if I had a chance to even break down pictures of some of them that I do and don't like. But they are not in this list because I have not had a chance to actually try any of them out at this point. So without further ado, let's start up with our best GA setup. Now, what I'm going to be doing is you're going to see me looking in different directions because I have my laptop here and I have another screen over here showing me what I want to talk to you all about. So let's throw the first one up. This is the Flight Sim Starter Set from Sporties.com. This has the Honeycomb Aeronautical Alpha Yoke, has a Bravo Throttle Quadrant, and the Thrustmaster Rudder Pedals. I think together this is a great setup for $599.99 if you are looking to buy something for yourself or for that aviator or simmer in your life or somebody that you're trying to help out get into aviation or simulation. You might be able to find these pieces for a lower price elsewhere, so I would Google around. However, Sporties has never done me wrong, but sometimes, yes, their prices are not the cheapest. Now, if you want something slightly cheaper, you have the Logitech G SciTech Flight Simulator Yoke and Rudder Pedals. I used to sell these at Sun and Fun in Oshkosh and AOPA events when I was used to be a contractor for SciTech. These are great introductory pieces and for $360 it's hard to go wrong with them. Given there are some limitations, the yoke stops at 45 degrees and you're tied to only three axes for throttles, however you can redo that however you want. And personally I really don't like those rudder pedals, there are better ones on the market today. So this is your best GA setup, overall suggestion. So you have a good one that's going to be $600, and you have another option that's going to be $360. Depending on what kind of budget you're working with, these are some great ones that you can work with. Now, given there are sales on the Honeycomb products at different websites, depending on which country you live in and whether or not these stores ship to you. So Google around, take a look, see what your local stores are offering. And when I say local, I mean your country. See what you can get for a price on those to piece together what you really want. These are all suggestions. So piecemeal, or if you're in the U.S. and you like one of these suggestions, go ahead and order from Sporties. After that, the best budget setup. I've said it before. I'm going to keep saying it again until somebody replaces it. The Extreme 3D Pro Joystick from Logitech. For $35, you cannot beat this product. Now, if you want to spend, if you have a budget that goes all the way up to about $150 to $170, I highly recommend buying the Extreme 3D Pro and then matching it with the T-Flight rudder pedals from Thrustmaster. The price point is great. It's being paired up with a lot of other simulators elsewhere, and I think you'd be very happy with the setup. So for the price point of $155 to $160, depending on tax and import fees, whatever you might be in the world and what you might be paying for, I think this is one of your best budget setups. Now, if you want to go slightly higher than that, you can go for the T-1600 or 16,000, sorry, M FCS flight pack. The only thing I don't like about this flight, pla flight pack, if you look at it closely, it gives you everything you really want except for a second throttle axis. The throttle quadrant here is only a single throttle quadrant. And if I'm gonna be spending this kind of money, I'd rather just buy the joystick and the rudder pedals and then buy a Logitech uh, throttle quadrant to go in the middle because it'll give more functionality with that depending on what you're trying to do. 
So that's going to be the end of your basic budget intros here. Now we're going to get into where things start to get a little bit more costly. At this point, we're going to talk about your fighter setups. Now, I have always been a fan of Thrustmaster for the entirety of my life. My first joystick that was not the basic IBM joystick with the little button on top that we used to play Microsoft Flight Sim with back in the 80s and 90s. Man, I'm old. Um, yeah, that. Uh, this was my first here. So, not this Warthog. That was not my joystick. first joystick. But my first joystick from way back when, when I got my first actual joystick, was a Thrustmaster Viper back in the day when it has all the pins. However, this Hotels Warthog is an amazing joystick option. They do have other top pieces you can buy, the Viper, the Hornet, and the Warthog. It is expensive, $550. I, I'm not going to lie. And if you were to pair it up with the uh, pendular rudder system, which is really nice, you're looking at over a grand right there. That's a lot of money for just a fighter setup. So I'm going to do you one better. This is dreaming. This is, you got a lot of money to burn and you want something amazing. That's, that's an amazing setup. I like it a lot. But if you want to save some cash and you want something that's just as good, but it's just not a Thrustmaster, this X-56 Hotas was developed by SciTech before the whole rigmarole of SciTech selling all their IP and everything to Logitech. This was a great product. I was trying my hardest to get the early version of this when I was still a contractor with SciTech, but I unfortunately did not get one. Uh, however, the X-56 Hotas is by far an amazing product if you want a fighter setup. It has the Hotas with a dual throttle quadrant has plenty of flips and switches, sliders, hat switches, everything that you might want for a fighter setup at home. The only thing you're missing is going to be your rudder pedals. So what I recommend is for $250, you go ahead and buy those Thrustmaster rudder pedals, the uh, T1600s or whatever they were. Let's see. Let me pull that back up and throw it back on the screen. The T-Flight rudder pedals for $130 on top of $250, you are still coming in below $400, which is still cheaper than the Thrustmaster Warthog. So if it was my money and the fact that I've got a family and i got to explain potentially when my wife comes down those stairs and comes into my subterranean office, well, my basement office, subterranean sounds so much nicer though. Um, when she comes in and she sees me flying an F-16 or an F-18 and Microsoft Flight Sim or X-Plane 12 flying the Tomcat, she's going to go, when did you get that? And if I had the Warthog, it'd be a little bit more difficult to explain a $1,000 of uh, uh, investment, let's say, into my flight sim set if I bought the, the Warthog and the Pendular Rudder pedal. So if you're somebody like me, you're trying to maximize your money, the X-56 Hotas with the Thrustmaster Rudder pedals are going to be your way to go. So that's going to round out the majority of selections because the next two suggestions are going to come from one manufacturer and one manufacturer alone, given there are companies that do make some offerings that will kind of may help you build into these certain setups but if you want something Boeing because apparently if it's not Boeing you're not driving is that how that goes if it's not Boeing you're not skiing hmm I don't want to get infringed on copyrights trademarks and all that so I'm, I'm just not gonna say the actual quote but if you want something Boeing, the TCA yoke pack from Boeing is amazing from what I've heard. I have not been able to try it out. There are some caveats to any one of these devices. However, this is a pretty good setup. For $500, it's pretty expensive, but if you were to tie this up with the uh, the T-Flight rudder pedals from Thrustmaster for $130, you would have a really nice Boeing look-alike consumer grade uh, replication. So moving on, if you want Airbus, I recently did the video about the Airbus. You have two different packs you can buy or you can piece them together however you want. You got the uh, officer pack and then you have the captain pack. The captain pack gives you everything that you might be looking for to have your full-on Airbus setup at home. Pair that up with the T-Flight rudder pedals as well and you're still coming out the door less than $500 here in the US. I don't know how much import fees and everything else are across the rest of the planet, but I think that would be a nice setup, especially because the joystick is ambidextrous and you have a lot of features with the captain pack tying in all that center pedestal to do as much as you possibly can, which I think it does look nice. It, it really does. There are some things that I don't personally like about the entire setup, but again, having the built-in detents where my Honeycomb Aeronautical Bravo Throttle Quadrant doesn't have them built in, it's a nice feature, but again, if I'm going for the whole GA setup and flying every airplane I can, I'm buying a Bravo, not the Captain Pack. I'm not buying the, Th the Thrustmaster Airbus setup. But it is nice, and if you are going for Airbus or Boeing, Thrustmaster gives you the only true setup that is tied in as close as possible to consumer-grade replication for 
those airframes or those manufacturers. Now, that, those are all the suggestions. Uh, given these are all tie-ins and links, or not really links because I'm not sponsored by anybody, uh, these are all basic screenshots of some packs you can buy. That doesn't mean that you can't piecemeal all this stuff together and you can't go buy from Precision Flight Controls or some of the other sim makers out there that do make piece by piece replications for certain applications. They're just gonna cost more and you're not gonna find them at Best Buy. You're not gonna find them at Micro Center and some of those other places. So again, this was really a goal for things that, excuse me, you can buy off of the shelf. Now, my wish list: if I were to be building a simulator setup from scratch and I could have any product, whether it's already on market or coming to the market right now, it would go along the lines of the Honeycomb ABCs. I'd be looking at a Honeycomb Alpha XPC, a Bravo Throttle Quadrant, and then the Charlie Rudder Pedals because I really liked those when I had a chance to try them out at Oshkosh. After that, for the, the joystick and say a fighter setup, I really wish I could have it because as I look at the pictures of these, they look amazing. They look like they feature everything I'd want. But the Sigma Tau from Honeycomb has a nice industrial look. It's very clean to me. It gives you a lot of options on there for switches, for detents, for sliders. Everything there is what I would want for a fighter setup or even a spacer setup. So, folks, that's the end of this video. You know what my wish list is if I was going to build something from scratch. However, you also have my list of things that I recommend for you all to build your core components at home for your flight sim setup. If you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. If you did not like this video, tell me how I can do better. That way I can make a video you like next time. If you did like it, like and subscribe if you would like to. If you don't, well, maybe you'll come across my videos again. Like I've said a long time ago, I do this for the fun of it and to help anybody that's looking to be from a zero to hero or anywhere you are within simulation or aviation. If you're just trying to have some fun at home or practice something or at least extend your learning experience so you're not spending as much time and money with your instructor in an airplane, in a simulator, or so on and so forth, I want to help you all out. So, Joe from NDB Aviation, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy out there, and see you all again real soon. Bye-bye.